WLOE Eden. WMYN Mayden. Listen online all the time. RockinghamCountyRadio.com. All right, good morning, everybody. Good Friday morning, everybody. My name's Kevin Southern. I'm the public information officer at the Sheriff's Office. Um, in the studio with me today is our very own Sheriff Sam Page. Sheriff, good morning. Good morning. I'm glad to be here. You know, we started off this week very busy. Had a very special guest here in Rockingham County. Actually, he drives the same color suburban as my Tahoe. <laughs> yes, sir, he did. Now, now, tell us a little bit about that, Sheriff. Well, you, were involved, you were involved in that. Actually, I was embedded, as they say, embedded with the Secret Service. Service all day, 11 hours Monday. We are uh, probably 30 officers from the county and the, and, and Reeswin Eden mm -hmm. working together uh, in just our part of the county. And mm -hmm. then you had several officers from uh, between Raleigh all the way uh, back toward Durham and back toward Guilford County work together. We had the vice president to come in, vice president of the United States. Joe mm -hmm. Biden came in, and we had to provide security and also court, uh, work with the Secret Service to coordinate the uh, detail. And it was it was amazing. Anytime we do these events, it's just it's an education in itself. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, we, we received a lot of calls, and, and the media was calling and stuff about all the uh, sheriff cars and, and and highway patrol cars and stuff set up across the roadway there uh, on the uh, bypass and whatnot. And for those who uh, don't know or haven't already figured it out, that's what it was about, uh, you know, to provide that extra security as he was passing through the R county. Right. Any Anytime uh, the president or vice president comes in, if they're passing through and they're going to come on our highways, pretty much we have to shut down the roads and... And, and, you know, in Durham, you picture this, Durham, four-lane expressway uh, coming into Hillsborough off of 40. But the, we basically shut that block down and stuff. But, you know, th there's no traffic flowing when the vice president's in town. Right, right. And, and so, so again, it, it, I, I just want to express to everybody, we appreciate your patience. Uh, if you have any complaints, uh, you, I, I told everybody last night you can contact Guilford County. <laughs> <Sheriff's> <laughs> Absolutely. Office, but, but, honestly, we were working. I would say that I believe Guilford probably had 80 deputies involved and as far as highway patrol and and all other and there's some officers that were playing clothes i you know i didn't know which agency they were with mm -hmm. but uh it was a big detail see the helicopter flying i did see the helicopter it passed over top of one, of, our, one of our former troopers from rockingham county well uh, richard uh not uh, richard collie was, mm -hmm. was up right. flying and uh he's a new pilot with the highway patrol and uh he, he was up and about and again it was just an amazing event but we were able to get through it after it started about 7 30 in the morning and we finally finished at 6 30 monday evening all right but again uh it was a it was it was a wonderful day. We had uh, uh, thankfully not very eventful, which right. is good. Yes, absolutely. And you know what? I'll be honest with you. I, I'm not going to be political or anything, but I would expect between now and November 6, you'll probably have probably the vice president, president, and probably uh, uh, Mr. Biden and Mr. Ryan. They'll probably be coming into town and, and business. So just get ready. And so, ladies and gentlemen, if you, if you call me, I had a news guy call me the uh, Monday, and he said. Oh, What's going on out here with all these uh, all these calls we're getting? And I said, well, we have a special operation and everything is fine. Uh -huh. And uh, but on those circumstances, when we are doing the presidential and vice presidential es escorts, I'm very restricted to what I can say. Uh, but I can tell you this is it was a it was a good day, and I appreciate everybody's help. Thank all the law enforcement agencies for their hard work because they did a job well done. And to our local law enforcement, to our Eden Police, Reasonable Police, and then also our sheriff deputies, thank you from the sheriff because y'all did a wonderful job. Well, and and we do appreciate everybody's patience because you know that's not something that we can you know announce and uh, you know make everybody aware of uh, ahead of time. You know that would jeopardize safety and stuff. So, um, and speaking of safety, there's there's some things that have been going on here um, recently um, in the news. I'm sure everybody's seen and heard about it. Uh, um, that concerns me, and I know it concerns you as sheriff, and, and concerns really everybody. Well, well, what, what you're alluding to is, you know, within the past month, we we had a shooting in Aurora, Colorado. It uh -huh. was a movie. Uh, they were showing a, a premiere, I think, of Batman, and a uh, lone gunman with uh, several weapons went into a movie uh, movie theater and shot several people. And then it wasn't long after that. What within the past ten days, we've had uh, we had a shooting at a Sikh temple over in uh, Wisconsin, mm -hmm. and uh, and and some people were shot and killed there and, and again a lone shooter and uh you know, I knew right after that you're going to start getting some calls, and I was going to start getting some calls. And I said, you know, what what's the best thing I can, you can tell people? And I said, well, one thing, Kevin, you know this, you do crime prevention. That's right. what you do primarily. And working as a sheriff for uh, several years and as a law enforcement officer, you can't 
you can't predict when an event's going to occur normally, but uh, but you can prepare. Right. And 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 I was doing a little internet. I do a little surfing on the internet, a little Google time, and I saw that the city of Houston had put together a safety plan. They got a they got a government grant to to put together a video, and it had like five different topics. But the mm -hmm. what, one of the topics that I picked up on was called run hide fight and basically it says what to do in case of an, uh, of an active shooter last night we met with a Monroton uh, community watch group which was a wonderful group and that ice, and that ice cream was good <laughs> yes sir and I love these community watch groups but we, we talk, discussed this a little bit and we showed that video it's a five minute video mm -hmm. uh, but uh, but what it basically tells you to do is you have a few options, but you need to do something. Right. And and what we can do as an individual to make sure that we're safer in our community and our environment is just be aware of your environment and have a plan. And what I was going to tell you, if you're interested in getting this video, whether you're a church group, a community group, government group, school system, or whatever, we are making this available. We contacted, I you know, asked you to contact Houston City for me. Yes. They told us that we could reproduce and make as many copies as we want, and also Roy. We're going to do that also. We'll get you a copy of that, and we'll, we'll, and it, we'll put it on the Internet, and then you can select now. But, it, but again, like I said, they made this to help save lives, and, and we found out about it, and we're providing it to make sure that any group in Rockingham County, if you want to get a copy of it, it contact Kevin Southern, right. Crime Prevention Officer, Rockingham County, 634-3232. Ask Kevin, and we'll make sure you get a copy. Guys, going to tell you today. I'm going to need you to run a copy by uh, one of our local uh, high schools and Absolutely. get that to the principal. But again, um, it's a it was a very it was a very sad time in America when you start seeing all these situations occurring. And then I start asking, as a, as a chief law enforcement official for the county, my question is, what can I do or what can we do mm -hmm. to better protect ourselves? Right. Well, and, and I mean, you know, it seems like uh, at least every week we're seeing where one of these shootings occurs or, you know, a, a, a shooter is foiled before he actually gets an attempt or, or, or he tries something and all. And, and I guarantee you that none of these people that uh, are involved in these situations were anticipating that this was going to happen to them when they went to the movies or when they went to church or when they went to school that day in college or, or any of that kind of stuff. They, they, uh, they, I mean, you can't anticipate something like that, but it never hurts to be prepared. I mean, it, it could happen here just like it I, happened there. I always, I always go back to when I was a, when I was a Boy Scout. Were you a Boy Scout? Yes, sir. Okay. You remember the motto? The yeah. Boy Scouts. Be prepared. Be prepared. Yes, sir. And I, and I tell you what, I've carried that motto with me when I was in the military, you know, serving my country uh, in, in the past 31 years and working in law enforcement. Be prepared. You can't prepare for everything, but if you have a little preparation, you have a plan. Generally, well, I've always heard this saying that the team that has a great plan will be successful. There you but go. But if you don't have a good plan, you're going to probably have problems. So again, uh, you know, prepare uh, for for emergencies. Last night at the at the, at the Monroton Group, they were talking about inclement weather, situation where people would lose power. Yeah, uh, uh, which is something we faced yeah, here recently, yeah. like a few months ago. Well, you know, we had a situation, this is a crisis, you know, during the, during the summer months when a lot of time when our seniors are, are don't have, you know, the, uh, when it's hot and a lot of people don't mm -hmm. have air conditioning, you know, we do our program fans for the elderly. Yeah. That's just a way of just kind of get ahead of the curve and try to get some fans out to some of our seniors that might need help them out to be cool, to remain cool during these hot times. Absolutely. Because people, people die of heat stroke all the time. Time. Absolutely. Um, you you got an article. You got a little notation in here about officers recently injured and killed down in Louisiana. As we were having the community watch meeting last night, and I try to read up, and I didn't get to read it until this morning mm -hmm. on the internet. But there were two deputies that were shot and killed uh, in Louisiana. Uh, one answered a call for for assistance, and when he got there, the other officer uh, was fired on. And I think that it, it sounded like kind of an ambush. But uh, they ended up arresting. Uh, they ended up arresting more than one mm -hmm. that was yes. tied in with this. But it ended up, I think, uh, at least. Uh, 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 probably four or five officers were shot. Right, and but and, two were killed. Two, two were killed exactly. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, we're just seeing this increase in, in violence, and you know, I think it has a lot to do with just the state of uh, the state of things today, and and the way things are. You know, people are becoming desperate, and uh, well, there are, you know, we are having some tough times. Our economy, our unemployment rate. Uh, you know, don't want to get too heavy into this, but. A lot of those factors, uh, the mental drive, health system. Oh my! Is, yes. Well, you know, we had a meet, we had a meeting we had a meeting the other day, and I and I think I need to bring this out. You know, we had a meeting with the mental health representatives, and Larry Johnson is you know is uh, with Department of Social Services, kind of oversees the right. process. 
and Larry was talking about, you know, what solutions can we do? You know, because there was a re there was a talk about cutting additional funding. Well, let me tell you what has happened in North Carolina. You know, just just for the mental health situation, mm -hmm. is between 2004 and 2007, mental health reform came into play, mm -hmm. and basically what that meant was the state ended up cutting beds. For, where services were provided for persons that had psychological issues that needed help, needed uh, needed assistance, they cut those state beds and threw it basically threw it back to the communities. They formed what these things called local management entities, and now we have a local management entity, uh, and we work with Daymart, Daymart and, and they do a fantastic right. job. But I told them, I said, you know, we're already having a lack of beds. Uh, we've had cases where we've had to sit with patients at the hospital where an officer is off the street sitting in a hospital with a mental patient. Mm -hmm. Could be a one-on-one -on -one situation mm -hmm. for days, seven, eight, nine days, mm -hmm. and that's an officer not working on the street. Right. And, and so we, we, we see that. But also, when you cut the funding to mental health for services now, if you cut 20% of services to mental health, you might as well add 20% service requests for law enforcement. Absolutely. Because everything now is defaulting back to law enforcement. And what I'm concerned about is more and more persons with mental illness mm -hmm. ending up in our county jail system. Instead of where they need to be, which is, you know, getting the help that you, they you need. Don't need, need. You don't need to be jailing the mentally ill. You need to be getting assistance. And you need, we need community assistance and mm -hmm. support. So, ladies and gentlemen, to our listeners out there, Talk to your representatives in the in, in county in the county government, and we appreciate their help and all that they do. Contact your state representatives and contact your congressman, and let them know that we need to continue supporting, in, just in the mental health arena, yes. mental health uh, funding and support. Absolutely, so that Be we can because there are a lot of people that are that are in crisis that need support, and uh, quite frankly, I don't think they're getting the assistance they need. And but I do appreciate. Uh, our local management entity. I do appreciate our social service director, Larry Johnson, mm -hmm. and, and and I do appreciate the support, basically of the of the uh, ad hoc mental health uh, group that is in Rockingham County. And it's one other group is a, is a reasonable area foundation. They right. have been tr very supportive in providing funding mm -hmm. for grants to help us do a better job in the area of mental health. So to the reasonable area foundation guys, thank you. Uh, Mr. Carville, thank you very much. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, now speaking of, uh, uh, the county commissioners and county government on to a, uh, much different note, a, li a lighter note, I guess you might say, uh, um, you attended a, uh, county commissioner meeting the other day and got some good news, didn't you? Well, f well, f well, the first good news is, uh, well, the first good news is this is, you know, when we go out here, uh, working with our drug officers and our and our detectives, you know, when we seize property from the bad guys, something good happens. When we seize their property, the federal government allows us to use that in the form of what's called seized assets. Uh -huh. I can only use that money for law enforcement purpose, training, equipment, technologies, for example. And uh, I went before the commissioners uh, last Monday and asked for ninety thousand dollars, roughly, to purchase uh, one of our new canines, to purchase equipment for our different in our different divisions: detective division, patrol division, civil division, jail division, mm -hmm. all those divisions. But I, what, what they gave me approval to do that, and and that's additional equipment that they normally wouldn't have because. We have the funding where we seize the money from the bad guys uh -huh. and we put it to work for good. We also, in your programs, or additional money for crime prevention, right. uh, for our school programs such as DARE mm -hmm. and the GREAT program, which is our anti-gang program. Yes. Again, s uh, several directions we were able to refocus that money. But that was one thing, and I want to thank uh, to all my commissioners, thank you for helping us to be able to use those seized assets for a good use, yeah. and we thank you. That's ninety thousand dollars of bad guy money that we're repurposing well, and, and using for good. Act so. Actually, in some of the training that I've been able to do that I normally wouldn't be able to do because of you know, of the low training monies and stuff yeah, for our right, budget. Right. Uh, uh, next month, I'm going to be going to uh, El Paso, Texas. Mm -hmm. uh, they're trying to put together it's a program putting against called Border Sheriff Training, and what they're trying to do. The title is "What Happens at the Border Does Not Stay at the Border," and and I'm going to be real quick because we're coming up on a 15 minute here. And uh, basically, it's training, two-day training, and also a border tour. And I'm taking that information back to Rockingham County and back to the sheriffs of North Carolina and let them know what we saw. Because a lot of times, what happens at our borders comes right into the interior U.S. And of course, you know, we can talk about this, and we have talked about it. You know, North Carolina is in the southeast area is number two in drug trafficking routes next to the Atlanta region. So, so again, I, this training is all paid for by assets that are seized from the bad guys. So we're letting the, the bad guys money work for us in a good way uh, we're up on the 15 minute mark so we're going to go ahead and we're going ahead and, and uh, take a break uh, now and we'll be back in just a little bit WLOE Eden WMYN Mandan 
Listen online all the time. RockinghamCountyRadio.com Yeah, Kevin, you just brought to my attention that the, our next show, which is going to be on uh, Community Accents, is going to be on September 21st, that I'll actually be out in... Um, El Paso. Now, I didn't tell you this. El Paso is, is directly across from Rio Grande, right across from Juarez, Mexico. Uh-huh. And my understanding is that Juarez is the most dangerous city in, in Mexico. I mean, you know, where the cartel uh, run and where they uh, committed a lot of homicides. It's a very dangerous area. But but we knew that when we were doing the training that we wanted to go to Ground Zero to see everything at Ground Zero. But uh, I was going to tell you, maybe on the 21st, it's only what, what's the time difference between here and Texas? Uh, two hours, I think. Two hours. So what what I may do, what I may do is I may just go ahead and uh, give a call, and we maybe do a uh, uh, Roy. What we may do is we may do a uh, remote uh, from El Paso and kind of give y'all a heads up on what's going on and have the training because we're going to get there on the twentieth and start on the twenty first. So uh, this will be the first day of the training, and maybe give you a little commentary. So. And I've got to bring this up because I, I kind of find it uh, interesting. Uh, tell us about the barbecue you're going to have while you're down there. Well, that's the final thing <laughs> is is we're going to, like I say, have two days of concentrated border training on different aspects of, 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 of border violence and crime and, and how that reflects back into the U- U.S. and the interior states where we are. Uh, but also I think it's going to be a border tour and the final finale will be a, a barbecue on the border. So I think we're going to get a meal right there on the border. Barbecue so so on that'll the border. be that'll be pretty. right across from Warren. Well, Texas, never right. turn never turn out a meal. But again, like I said, you know, I wouldn't be able to I wouldn't be able to go to some of this extra training if it wasn't for having uh, the resources uh, that through seized assets. Right. And so, ladies and gentlemen, if you hear me say seized assets or forfeiture monies, I want you to understand that's money that we take directly from the bad guys. It's been re- redistributed through the marshal service, mm-hmm. and it can be used for training equipment technology to help us improve and enhance what we're doing in law enforcement so again we, it's we not taxpayer dollars oh, that's, that's bad guy that, that, that i've got to underline right. no tax dollars involved so that's, exactly. a, that's, that's a good deal exactly but now let me let me let me go to something else here uh for the past few years uh we've been in discussion with the sheriff's office about you know we haven't had a firing range a uh, police firing range or a sheriff's firing range in about 15 years. When right. I came into office, uh, our fire range, I had to close it down because of safety because it was in an unsafe direction near the high school, so we closed it down. And we pretty much have been using, utilizing the Reesville, and the, mostly Eden, but a little bit of the Reesville fire range. Mm-hmm. And we've also had to travel to Guilford County and some other ranges because to get scheduling and get, and get a spot where we can shoot to keep our skills up for our deputies. And uh, we've had to go other places. And But the good news is, uh, I, in discussion with Lance Metzler, our new county manager, mm-hmm. and also some of our commissioners, uh, our commissioners unanimously agreed uh, last uh, this past week to uh, move forward in considering uh, establishing a firing range at the landfill uh, on some property that's owned there. So the property is already paid for. It's in a remote area, so less disturbance to the population and right, citizens. Right. And um, increase safety, increase safety, and yeah. also increase a little presence out in the landfill area. So, uh, you know, in years past, we used to get calls about people saying about people uh, hunting illegally out there on the yeah. landfill, which is county property, but also uh, hunting uh, illegal hunting in the area. So, you know what? It might uh, help curtail some of those issues. The wildlife may appreciate this, right? right. Uh, wildlife officers too. But uh, what I was going to say is, it looks like we're uh, possibly moving forward to for consideration. Now, let me tell you, there will be some public hearings, and and please, if you uh, follow the newspapers follow the internet and look at the notices but there will be some public hearings uh, for the consideration it's not a done deal yet right so, so again like I said because the public has to approve it and the commissioners have to sign off on it and it has to be rezoned so that's the short version but again to the citizens of Rockingham County is each one of the deputies that work for us in Rockingham County to me, they're the first line of defense for protecting you and your families, helping you. Mm-hmm. And they are like your soldiers on the ground here in Rockingham County because if something bad happens in the county, those are the people we're going to call upon to fight the fight. Right. And, and again, but now I've got to tell you this. I always tell people the first line of defense actually is the homeowner. That's right. the first line. But we're there to back you up, and they are. And my deputies are the boots on the ground that help uh, to try to keep the bad things that are coming into this from the state, coming in from other areas that come into our county and try to cause us harm. You know, they they are they are like your soldiers here. So again, I want to make sure their skills are up, their skills are honed, and you know, in the past. The state only requires like one qualification day and night fire, so basically yes. once a year. But I got to ask you, quite frankly, if you, Kevin, you know this, and you know that I, my SWAT team trains every month. 
Right. Uh, and their skills are, are very well defined. But, uh, you know, with our, with our patrol deputies, I felt like that we're just not meeting the mark, and I want to do a better job because if I issue, issue them a handgun, a shotgun, or a rifle, I want to make sure that when they go to the bad guy's house that's doing a bad thing, if, if grandmother's sitting on the porch and bad guy's out there with a, with a shotgun acting up and he, and we have to use our weapons, I want to make sure we, we hit the mark. Absolutely. Because Absolutely. we don't want to accidentally hit grandma. And, practice and, and, and makes better. Practice that's for sure. makes better. Yes. And, and we want to make sure that we, we are providing the best level of service, whatever that is. That's why we do in-service training. Mm-hmm. That's why we do our firearms training. That's why we do our educational programs. That's why we do our, up, our you know in-service upgrade training every year, regular. And what makes you good in the military is training. Right. And what makes you good in in law enforcement is regular training. So, Absolutely. So we're trying to be the best because you know our citizens pay. You know they they do pay a lot of ta- a lot of taxes in this county, and we want to make sure from the law enforcement public safety end in our little section of the of the county government is that we're giving that best level of service that we can. You know we've got a great nine one one center. We're getting re- you know we're getting ready to build a consolidated communication center. Absolutely. Uh, and that that money has been already approved through a grant. Mm-hmm. Uh, so all all the police agencies and fire rescue will be dispatched from one location in the county. Mm-hmm. Uh, we are also got, a, uh, got a, good, a great emergency management system here. We've got Johnny Bowles, who's our emergency management director new, mm-hmm. and he's doing a good job. Got a lot of experience in communications and also in fire service. Right. And then, let's don't forget Robert Carver. Robert and the, and the guys and uh, girls down at the fire marshal's office, they do a wonderful job investigating uh, suspicious fires and also fire safety and inspections. And have a let, and Susan Hall with the 911 Center does a mm-hmm. great job. Public safety in, in Rockingham County, I, I think the citizens are really blessed because we've got a lot of professionals that care about what they're doing and the services they divide, that they provide mm-hmm. for the citizens of this county. So, again, the only way to be good at your game is you got to train, train, and train. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, and it's a, as far as law enforcement goes and, and, and the firearms training, I mean, it's a necessary evil as far as all of that goes. I mean, the bad guys, they have weapons, and, and their level of weaponry has gone up through the years, and we're seeing that. Exactly. Um, and, and, you know, so we've got to be prepared to meet that response. Uh, um, you know, with the bad guys got um, some of these really uh, – uh, it's like assault rifles and stuff like that. I mean, you know, we need to be prepared to uh, take that on if need. Well, be. The, the problem is most most of the bad guys that we deal with are, are better funded and better financed, uh, particularly with your drug cartels right. that, that are coming out of Mexico. But uh, now, now l- l- tell us about the uh, you know we were talking at that uh, community watch meeting last night about the uh, AR-15s and such that were seized uh, from those well, well a good illegals I, that we busted I'm, and passed. I'm going to touch on this and I'm I've got and I've got to get this in, mm-hmm. but. Uh, in the past six months, we've arrested, we've seized about 3,000 pounds of marijuana, mm-hmm. seized over a million dollars cash. Now, this is working with the Drug Enforcement Agency right. Task Force, right. Drug and Enforcement Agency Task Force, and we have one member on there. And uh, the we- the drugs, uh, four AR-15 type weapons, five persons that were illegally, that were in this country illegally trafficking drugs from Niagara, Mexico, uh, that were tied back to the drug trafficking organizations were found in our county at three different locations in the past six months. To me, ladies and gentlemen, that bothers me. Yeah, it's here. That, it's that's, here. Why, that's why we're stepping up our training, our surveillance, our support, and that's why I'm going to the border to bring that information back to not only to the sheriffs uh, across North Carolina, but the citizens that deserve to know that information because I want you to be as safe as you can be here in Rockingham County. But, but if you don't know about things, that's why I go out and do the research. It all goes back to being prepared. Now, let me throw something else at you. Mm-hmm. The county commissioners, i got to go back to county commissioners, they signed off on looking at a new program for the next two years. It's called Direct Alert. And what it is is a, is a mercy reporting system where you can report, say, for example, if there's a, fi- a major fire, if there's a major event, uh, uh, a major weather situation or whatever, uh, you, you can use the phone system. And what it does, it does automatic calling where, you know, you can you can direct it where it'll call on the, uh, like thousands of people on the phone or to their cell phones or right. wherever they, whoever subscribes to this. Right. Also to their internet. You know, it can, you can send text messaging. You can contact different groups in a quick period of time. But it's called, I think it's called Direct Alert System. Mm-hmm. And it was kind of like what was you, the other program we used to have was called the Code Red. Code Red. Mm-hmm. But there are different programs that are quick notification systems. But mm-hmm. a good example of this is we had a person uh, about a month ago that was missing that was elderly, that had medical problems. And we put that word out on the Code Red, which is a similar program. Mm-hmm. And what happened was in 30 minutes, we got a call 10 miles away from where the person was last seen. Mm-hmm. Saying, "Oh, that person's here at my house," and we were able to find that person in 30 minutes. Yeah, 
And so just may, imagine if you were in a situation like out in Colorado or the other place where they're having these fires and stuff, these, mm-hmm. these big uh, brush fires, and you need to notify a few thousand people in a, in a, in a little period of time. I asked, uh, I asked uh, Mr. Bowles, I said, roughly how long would it take to notify 55,000 people, which represents the unincorporated population in Rockingham County? Mm-hmm. He said probably about an hour you could notify 55,000 people. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't have enough telecommunicators in the 911 center or anywhere in this part of this uh, this part of the region to call 55,000 people in an hour. So it's very it's very overwhelming of what it can mm-hmm. do, and what and we want to make sure that we we're able to expand on that to provide the best level of service and notification for safety for our citizens. All right. Um, so that that's that's another thing that we're that we're working on. Also, uh, we don't have much time, but I got to say this: last week we did a little presentation before school started. School started this Monday, All right? Ladies and gentlemen, when you see those yellow school buses out there and they're coming down the road and you're meeting them, anticipate them that they're going to stop. Yeah. Also, watch out for our children at our bus stops. Watch your speeds in our in our school zones because we, the sheriff's office, the local police agencies, the highway patrol are all watching the speeds, and we will be enforcing for any violations. Now, zero tolerance. Zero tolerance. A few years ago, we uh, a young man, an Atkins kid, uh, who attended high school, got struck uh, in Stoneville, and a law was enacted. Uh, that re- in regards to passing stop school buses. I'm telling you right now, ladies and gentlemen, we are watching for these violations. Uh, it is the most serious traffic offense. You can you can lose your license. You can mm-hmm. have points. You can lose your license if you violate this. Plus, uh, and under some circumstances, you might end up going to, uh, going to prison. Absolutely. You know, so the thing is, we don't want to see any of our children injured no. or hurt because somebody passed a stop school bus. So what we're telling you, if you're near a school zone, slow down. If you see a school bus, slow down and anticipate it stop. Be careful. School is back in session. All those wonderful kids, or I know they don't like being back in school, but, <laughs> but it, it, school is back in. We've got a great school system here in Rockingham County. Dr. Shotwell works extremely hard to make sure that our kids get what they need. And again, uh, to all the citizens of Rockingham County, as your sheriff, I would say, please remember, school's in session. Be careful. Watch out for the buses. Watch out for the kids. Plan ahead. Don't no. get in a rush. Leave a little early. Leave a little early. Be careful, right? And, and like I said, we'll have another good school, uh, school uh, safety, uh, safe school year. And, and that's exactly what we're looking for. Um, uh, just to let you know, too, before we run out of time, uh, a couple of uh, current um, scams that we're seeing here in the community for you to watch out for. Um, we have had some individuals going around, uh, basically targeting the elderly. Um, one will uh, knock on the door and, and ask the person inside to. Uh, uh, they'll tell them that they are there to um, assess the property lines and ask them to walk them around the property lines of their property. What does the other person do? The other person is uh, sneaking around back and, and breaking into the house through the back door while that person's out walking the property lines with this person and stealing. So uh, so, so, so basically, they're basically doing it. They're, they're diverting the attention of our seniors trying to trying to come up and try to basically divert them while another one tries to go in the house and exactly, steal. Exactly, exactly. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you heard Kevin, crime prevention, latest scam. Let me just tell you this. If someone comes to your house and you don't know who they are, you don't have to open your door. You can talk to them through the door. If, they, if you don't want them there, tell them to leave. If they're not leaving, you get on the phone. What's that magic number you need to call? 911. 911. If you need assistance. And last night I was talking to Community Watch Group. Uh, Roy, a lot of, a lot, and Kevin, a lot, of, a lot of people say, well, it's not really a mercy, uh, I, I, but I would like to see a deputy, but I don't know the non-emergency number. Listen. Or scared they're going to get in trouble oh, if they don't. Let me, let me tell you. It's not an emergency. I'm not aware of anybody. No. Getting in trouble for for calling for assistance if they need fire rescue law enforcement in Rockingham County. If you need assistance, keyword. If you think you need a deputy, because you know, we're sheriff's office mm-hmm. talking today, call nine one one. Absolutely. And if you need them, we're going to send them. Uh, the thing is, we'll get there as quick as we can. But don't take a chance. Don't let strangers into your house. Keyword. Don't let strangers into your house. Don't open your door to people who you don't know who they are. And if you have any questions, call 911 and get a deputy out because I'd love to walk a property line with one of these guys and let them explain what's going on. Absolutely. If somebody wants to walk a property line with you, tell them, hang on, you'll get a deputy sheriff you to know, walk that property line you, with you. Know, you know, I'll give you an example. One of my county commissioners, i got to be real quick, had a situation. A guy came up one night about 10, 30, 11. Mm-hmm. I was talking to him on the phone. I said, it's, I said that ain't right. Tell him you're calling, you've got the sheriff coming up here right now. The guy ran. Uh-huh. And, and so if, if people run when you, they're trying to help you, they're probably up to no good. Yeah, probably not all right. legit. All right, it's 9 o'clock. 
We've run out of time. We have. Uh, we want to wish everybody a great weekend from the Sheriff's Office. And uh, we want to ask everybody to check out our revamped website. We've made it a little bit more interactive and easier for you to use, www.rockinghamsheriff.com. I'm Sheriff Page, and I'm telling you all, please, in Rockingham County, have a great weekend. And we want to thank WLOE, WOM, for their assistance on community accents.